Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery Class. Uh, this is Brett from Moonstream, and um, we're going to dive into some news. We're going to take a uh, look at some signals on our indicators, see what we see in the charts. Pretty quiet day. And uh, if you, uh, by the way, are watching this on our replay on our YouTube channel, uh, please go ahead and like the video if you like what we're going to share with you today. Always trying to help you out here with the markets. And um, so just diving right into some news. I guess I will jump over to the charts here just for a minute and see if there's anything we want to touch on just to start out with. You know, the iBit's been a pretty good leader and a forward leader of where price is going. So uh, this thing is kind of is uh, trying to grab this little question mark here um, is rolling over a bit. So I think we're you know, everything's pointing toward a pause here before anything resumes, maybe even drifting down a bit into the end of the week. And then um, but we do want to make sure that the monthly candle remains bullish. So we'll look at that. So let's take a look at uh uh, some news here. And by the way, if you're new to us, uh, you can learn more about us over at moonstream.io. We're one of the fastest growing communities in the crypto education space, being told that uh, we're top 3% by uh, you guys. And so that's great, great to hear a variety of uh, different services here that we offer and also some free stuff down below. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter, our free Monday newsletter every week. And you can sign up for these classes as well to actually join the classes live and get your questions answered. So just say hello to some people. I see uh, Perry and uh, David in the room. So uh, welcome you guys. And let's see, where's my participants window? Got a bunch of you here today. So Alex, uh, David, Francisco, Gene, Glenn, KS, Leslie, Mary, Perry. Oh, that's funny, Rare rhymes, Richard, Terry. Okay, that's funny. Uh, uh, Mary Perry, Richard and Terry, welcome. All right, I'm going to turn off my phone here because uh, the telemarketers love to call right when we're teaching class, so we are now in airplane mode. All right, ready to go. All right, everybody, uh, let's dive into the news so we can get to the charts. And as we know, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news, but it's always good to start with news and getting a frame around the information for the day. Uh, we don't really have any economic news coming up. Uh, the Fed, of course, dropping rates and uh, pumping the markets a little bit. Uh, we'll see how that filters out uh, and we'll look at sort of that cycle low. We do we do think there's a, a daily cycle low coming early October, around October 4th. So uh, we had a nice big pump up here recently. I think markets are going to cool down a bit, but you never know. You know, this thing's starting to be looking really attractive and uh, the parabolic move could start at any time. So um, in short, TLDR, it's a good time to be, you know, invested, at least not completely out of the market. I would say still have some powder dry for buying any dips, but we will uh, take a look at that here shortly. And anyway, so just diving into that, uh, Bitcoin price target rises 78K, this person says. Um, again, I always check the data on these and who's sending it out. Never heard of this person. And many times these um, uh, experts, everyone's an expert these days, are trying to make a name for themselves with some fancy, flashy clickbait titles. So 78K. Um, however, this is important. The Chinese, I was reading about this this morning, China has just followed suit with U.S. and started to uh, drop their rates as well and starting to stimulate their economy. And uh, it's not directly, um, as, as I recall, listening to it this morning, they were going to basically allow Chinese um, either institutions or the public or both, I'm not sure, to bar basically borrow from the Chinese government for, um, I don't know, at no interest. Uh, the details are still coming out. Maybe it's in this article, but to go and buy Chinese stocks and prop up their own stock market. So, gee, where have we seen that before? Certainly back in COVID, uh, when they started sending out stimulus checks, that was the net effect. People were putting it into their investment accounts and really kicked off. <clears throat> That's a big rally back in the after the COVID uh, dip. So anyway, let's see. Bitcoin price target rises. So this actually, you know, now, now it seems less of a clickbait headline. I hesitate on that, though, because there's a whole lot of sell pressure right up above where the uh, total market cap near the old all-time highs. Lots of sell pressure right around that 72K region on Bitcoin. And um, it's not going to easily clear. We're going to need some, see some serious money coming in. But this could do it. This could certainly kick things off. Uh, yeah, so David's saying stimulus package is tar targeted largely at the real estate market to prop it back up. Yeah, I did think I did remember hearing about that. So, but um, you know, anything that props the economy up certainly will help uh, because you know what happened. Everyone in China was in investing in real estate, and uh, that's kind of not gone well. So they need some way to prop that hole up or the whole house of cards comes crumb crumbling down. So here we go. So Bitcoin rallied strongly after the two previous stimulus package announcements by the People's Bank of China. Hasn't really done that on this news. So what's going on? Let's see. 
looks ready to undergo a substantial breakout towards 78k in the coming weeks uh not let's you know 78k may be a guess but at any rate the point is it would be great my thesis is you know, let's keep some powder dry and wait until we break and close and close above 74K. Call it 75K to be safe because if Bitcoin can go to 150K, that's still a double, you know, and uh, still could go down. So part of what I'm holding is to buy into that strength. And uh, so the whole point of all this and the frame we're putting around that is what could get us back above all that sell pressure? Because again, there's quite a bit. We'll look at that on the uh, the charts here in a moment. So on September uh, 24th, which is today, <clears throat> pardon me, central bank liquidity will boost demand, as we said, People's Bank of China. I'll also pull up my liquidity study showing that uh, this was uh, ordained or is due to start happening anytime now. So it's right on cue, by the way. I've been talking about this for weeks, and you can find um, some of my analyses over on TradingView. Just type in Brett Fogel. Uh, trading view like this and um, if you'd like to see that study first uh, choice here um, I do a number of periodic studies there and talking about the liquidity cycle here and one of them um, I also want to pull up the 10 factors that could get us to that 150k region and let's see I was sure I did one uh, I know it's in here somewhere as part of editor's choice and uh, you can scroll down here it was one of them has like 200 uh, 219 I talk about that liquidity cycle in this one but I'll pull it up for you guys and uh, maybe I'll do a dedicated one on that soon. So let's see. People's Bank of China, 140 billion of liquidity into the financial system by cutting the reserve rates. And uh, yeah, they call it the RRR by 50 basis points. Again, following suit with the US the Fed, the Fed, of course, dropping 50 basis points. And many are saying uh, possibly too late, but uh, we'll see lowering borrowing costs so they're trying to um you know boost up that real estate economy and the entire economy as they uh, we have already talked about because it's really struggling and uh, you know they just overbuilt for they were propping up their economy for decades just uh, you remember when you couldn't buy any concrete cuz China was buying all of it uh, i was in hong kong back around 2018 speaking in a prior business and there are massive, massive apartment complexes that uh, are um, have never been uh, occupied, and they're falling apart. They're starting to tear them down. They overbuilt to prop up the uh, economy. Yeah, Perry, empty cities. They just started building everywhere, hoping that people would buy it up, and I guess hoping that they would proliferate. Uh, and um, <clears throat> you know, they got rid of the old one-child family a long time ago, but. Uh, people aren't doing it. And so anyway, uh, we'll see how that plays uh, falls out here. It's, uh, it's too early to know. Let's see. Uh, unless anyone's looking for a great deal on an apartment in uh, China, I bet you could pick one up really cheap. Uh, oceanfront views are not so good. All right. So chief uh, economic or chief analyst at investment management firm, blah, blah, blah. China's latest stimulus package pointing out what influence other central banks to fathers follow suit. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, the bull run is musical chairs on multiple levels, certainly for us as investors, also for uh, countries not wanting to get left behind. Really surprised we haven't seen more countries like El Salvador come in and, and follow the Bitcoin standard because clearly the, that was successful. You know, I was at the Bitcoin conference in 2020, uh, 2021, 2021, right? Uh, when it was in Miami and Wynwood, and when they announced um, El Salvador, everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's everyone's going to fall," but no one's really followed yet, but they will. Uh, just like companies, they'll have FOMO, and that uh, also leads toward uh, those ten factors that I mentioned. That uh, we'll revisit the ten factors leading to 150 to 250k Bitcoin, uh, which they are starting to tip like dominoes, you guys. And uh, you, you can I started talking about this a year ago when we only had seven factors, so um, started adding more and more of those. And if you go back in time, you can kind of follow back. I don't know how long I started doing that, but uh, at any rate, been doing these for a while. Um, let's see, back to the news here. Bottom is in for global central bank liquidity. Okay, remember that. I'm going to show that to you in the charts. I have, uh, again, that liquidity study that I did uh, shows that. So let's see, sit back and watch the other central banks follow in line. So, right, so this is beginning. This is why I'm suggesting, uh, even though I do think we see a bit of a pullback here um, and, and we'll be putting in higher lows, I'm not going to wait for that because uh, these dominoes could start to fall pretty fast. And if all of a sudden all the central banks start doing the same and flooding the world with liquidity, which is what drives these markets. It's not the four-year cycle. Everyone thinks it is. It isn't. It's coincidental. 
it contributes to that with scarcity, but it's really the liquidity cycles. And uh, stay with me because I'll have that chart up in a minute and you'll see. So uh, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about that. Stimulus package, pledge huge rallies, Bitcoin. Let's see, for instance, PBOC, People's Bank of China injected $367 billion through reverse repos in October 23. Now, that was a huge buying um, time. We were buying. I was just uh, doing a study and uh, last night, and uh, maybe I'll pull it up here, although it's not uh, meant to be shared yet. It's uh, internally, though, showing uh, we had some huge wins back, started buying in early October of 2023. I didn't really even know this news then, but just it was clear to me the markets were ready to go. And uh, we had uh, over a, a one 500 percent winner, several 260 percent winners. So it's really all about it is about timing the market. You hear people say time in the market beats timing the market. Um, all, that's somewhat true. But if you can do both, you know, timing it and staying in, that's where the big, big wins happen. And so uh, coincidentally, it happened with the last liquidity injection. Ergo, the new round of liquidity coming in will also very much, very likely pump these markets going into the end of Q4 plus election cycle here in the US, et cetera, et cetera. You guys already know that. Uh, and uh, yeah, and then we were also buying in February of 2024 because look and look at this coincidentally, right? Nothing coincidentally, but uh, uh, air quotes, 140 billion more by reducing the RRR by 50 basis points in Jan of 2024, earlier this year, right before markets pushed higher again. I will show that on a chart. So again, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I didn't know this, but uh, clearly that was because um, I won't say coincidental, somewhat causal, I would say, and, um, and and worth noting. Okay, so TLDR, a Bitcoin price rose by over 100% following the stimulus package announcements, and they have those here on the charts. The two times we were buying, it uh, looks like back I can't, October, well, they have it a little bit late. Let me open this up. We were buying back in here, October, before this stimulus. And so they may have misnoted that per above, uh, but here the 140 billion stimulus back in uh, right around February of 2024, we were buying again. So we've been waiting, waiting, waiting in months and months of this downturn, but we're getting, I'm starting to buy in this region and uh, looking at this chart, by the way, we can see um, this is a different RSI. This is a the 50 and 200 EMA. Yeah, so so a price kind of uh, pushing back above the 50 and the 200 EMA. We do follow those. And that uh, 50 EMA, uh, pretty solid. Also see this reverse head and shoulders forming there in Bitcoin. Kind of, kind of. I mean, it's it's not exactly textbook. That right shoulder is almost like a double bottom here. So, but either way, um, putting in kind of a double bottom, higher lows. That's what I'm waiting for. And holding that 200 uh, uh, day EMA. Uh, so anyway, I'm looking bullish here. We just need to break above this downward trending, upward uh, trend resistance. But I, I think uh, the wind is at our backs and is coming. It's coming very soon, you guys. Uh, so let's see, as Coitus, as Coots pointed out, Bitcoin's performance, as I've been saying, closely tied to global liquidity conditions, not the four you're having. And China's easing measures could prompt broader shifts in risk appetite. What does that mean? More money coming into the markets, more appetite, more tolerance for risk on assets, more tolerance for high risk, high reward, in contrast to a rate hiking uh, liquidity or diminishing cycle, uh, risk assets suffer the most. And so we, we have the makings of a rip roaring bull market here. Uh, but um, got to be always be careful and a little bit contrary and saying, all right, what what could we be missing here? Let's see. Um, they're talking about the bull flag. You know, I've been talking about a bull flag for many weeks. The problem is this thing is a bit long in the tooth, uh, if you know what I mean, to be a bull flag. It's really a downward trending parallel channel. So uh, bull flags generally don't last this long. If we look at it on a weekly time frame, it kind of still squeezes out. So uh, either way, a breakout is good. It's just that whole flagpole measured move. I don't know if we can count on that with as long as this downtrend has been in place. Uh, typically, these are bull flags are kind of a rest and profit taking, let things settle out consolidation and then resumption of the trend. So we'll see uh, either way. Uh, I like what I'm seeing. And let's see, adding to the bullish outlook is the formation of a bull flag pattern. Um, again, questionable in my book, uh, <laughs> textbook wise, time wise. But anyway, still better than uh, the alternative. So, uh, yeah, and as a rule, the pattern resolves when the price breaks above the upper trend line and rises as much as the previous top trends height. The flagpole turning into the measured move. I'll show you that on the charts.
All right. Uh, we're going to look at this article as well. History suggests it's breakout time. Also, I have that in my liquidity study. I'll show you that. And more of this bull flag here. And now they're putting a Fibonacci target on this for set. Okay, so that's where they're getting the 78K number. Um, sure, I, I mean, that short term, 78. If we hit 78K, we'll hit 80. We'll spike to 80. And there's still that uh, study out there, uh, the 5.3 study. Uh, that um, I don't believe will be correct, but they, you know, sometimes they'll do studies based on historical data and they'll find some wiggle room on how to make it fit. And then, of course, the next time it doesn't work. But uh, there's an interesting study out there that um, I won't get into now. I did recreate it with the maths, uh, which the technical did the maths on that. And uh, it would it would suggest 80,000 is the next market cycle top. Uh, I don't see how that's that can be possible with the amount of money and liquidity flowing in, but I think it will psychologically be an area of resistance and the shorts uh, looking for and buying into that study are going to be piling in. So I think we'll see a pullback on around 80K, uh, although it could be turned into a massive short squeeze that pushes us to 100. So point is, be very careful um, using leverage here uh, and uh, you know maybe break call it, playing the breakout above 74K for a quick pop but, um, you know, base hits everybody. Let's see, uh, talking about that, that's where they get the 78K level. And uh, let's see, do you guys have any questions here? I see something coming in, stimulus package. Uh, thank you, Perry. Uh, China has empty city, homeless problems solved. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, are you talking about China or San Francisco? You know, China, San Francisco ha either has a raging, uh, you know, terrible homeless problem or a raging uh, camping success story. You know, if you think of it that way, there's tents everywhere. Uh, and of course, not, not kidding about homelessness, although much of it is self-inflicted. And um, so anyway, uh, yeah, as Perry's saying, I think the 5.3 theory is correct for pre-institutional Bitcoin. Good clarification. Yeah, but now we have different type of animal. Exactly. So uh, more money, more demand, less supply, price go up. So I think that, um, you know, and I also could suggest we're going to deviate from this four-year cycle. Uh, you know, I've been following Bob Lucas uh, as long as, um, you know, one of our other favorite channels, Channel Finance, you, you know, suggesting a left translated cycle since last year. And I thought we would have hit uh, earlier in the spring. Uh, we did hit all time high, but then it's kind of bled out and bled out. So it'll be interesting to see. Let's not be married to anything. One of the reasons that we're here is to talk about our indicators that really do give us a uh, an edge in these markets. And so that uh, is, we jump over there, that has really give, been our guiding light to all of these things. And so um, we'll talk, take a look at these as well, what I'm seeing. And um, <clears throat> and uh, especially on the uh, high flyers like Bitcoin and ETH. So I'll give you my price projections there. I do think we're topping out a little bit, but uh, nothing to worry about quite yet. We'll look at a weekly time frame, and we'll pull up our signals and see. And of course, our favorite indicator, the ERI Pro, if you're new here, don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you our bear market uh, signals that called the last market top right back in here, November 2021, as well as right back in here. So we nailed this. I was telling everyone, hey, guys, we shouldn't be going down here. Everyone thought we'd be going higher, but I'm like, our signals have shown and and, and flagged. And so we did show, we did count that. We got out. Some of you got listened to you, uh, my advice. We got out here and missed that downturn. And uh, so I'll show you and explain these here in a moment. All right, uh, let's see. Getting through the news, how are we doing on time? We're spending a lot of time on this one article. So let's move on. So RSI hints at, so this I'm not going to spend too much time on because our indicators are better. If you are using RSI, MACD, Stochastics RSI, all the uh, the usual indicators, I can tell you that uh, when I first really got into crypto in 2018, uh, my background is 25-year trader, options, Forex, et cetera, and I was using RSIs and Stochastics and MACDs, I was losing consistently because that's not giving anybody an edge. That's what everybody else is using. And plus you're trading against advanced AI market makers now. So what we have, we've created our own custom proprietary indicators that understand how these things work and uh, are, do things differently and do give us an edge. So many of you here are using those. Uh, if you like them, by the way, um, go ahead and drop in the chat how much you like those. And so let's see, somebody saying a couple of weeks ago, Mr. 100 stopped buying 100 Bitcoin per day. Interesting. They sold 1,200 Bitcoin in the past week. Interesting. Um, 
Yeah, I, I mean, we still don't know who Mr. 100 is. Maybe we'll open up this chart for us to take a look at. Uh, and uh, that's going to verify we're human. Clearly, it's uh, doesn't know. All right, <clears throat> we'll come back to this. Uh, so basically, RSI, let's, but I do want to see what everyone else is following, as then we can see where they might be wrong. And uh, again, I, I, again, if you're using everything that everyone else is using, you don't have an edge. Let's see. Uh, we are we are looking for what I'm looking for too is is a close this month above 63k, and we'll look at that also. Uh, key bid liquidity around 62k, which is important for structural reasons. Bid lower, a bit lower, 59k. There's there's more buyers. We have an indicator that shows this, by the way, our order block detector. So we'll be able to see where these buyers and sellers are lining up. And uh, here's another version of this is kind of the institutional level. This is either high block or it looks like coin glass. Uh, you don't need this. Uh, we our indicator simplifies all this, but basically it shows there's some buy pressure down below us, and if it does break, then down lower around that 62k range. I was I was suggesting based on my charts that we come down to retest 62k, and that's right around some key moving average support, and then we rock it higher, simply because our oscillator, the trend strength indicator is overbought on the daily and is due to pull back. And then that next dip is the big rocket, I believe. So, and let's keep going with this. This is actually a liquidation heat map as well. Let's see, <clears throat> higher lows, grinding up key levels. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're grinding up. But this chart also has a similar chart than, than I have. You know, this sort of triple bottom here around 53K was good. And we were buying all in this zone. What we need to do is start putting in higher lows. And it is good that we started putting in a not a higher low necessarily here, but sort of breaking above this downtrending trend line. I guess it sort of depends. We are coming up toward it. If we can put in a higher low, I have a very similar line drawn into, into support. Then we can bounce off of that and to go higher. And they have a, a drawn, it's interesting, it's copied down here. Same thing happened back here last October. So very similar setup. I think we see a massive or a nice push break up higher like this soon. That would certainly make sense. All right. Anything uh, Anything you guys want to add, please do. Let's see. Weekly time frames painted encouraging picture. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. Um, on the daily, I think we pull back. On the weekly, I think it's setting up and ready to go higher. And uh, we'll have a look at that here with our, our indicators. So you'll be able to see that. Next article, Bitcoin price support at 62K uh, must hold if Bitcoin bears step in traders step in. So Let's see. Yeah, 62k again. That's where I thought we'd land. Somebody was saying 63k. It's uh, we'll 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 do our own analysis on that. And uh, pinned. Let's see. Why is it pinned? Doesn't really matter. Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. So a lot of this is just sort of seeing what other people are saying. I I always make my own decisions, and my based on my own analysis. Bears are running out of time to dump back down. Yeah, yeah, you know, fortunately, there is not consensus because consensus is usually wrong. There is a whole lot of bears lining up and uh, also uh, not only here, but above the prior market tops. So setting up nicely for a massive short squeeze potentially. But uh, on the other hand, <laughs> they, you know, there's a lot of the bears have a lot of strength. The whales kind of, you know, they can they can zigzag and control things if they really all coordinate but they've got to nuke this pretty fast. So if they otherwise they're put in a higher low, that thing will build up to, uh, uh, momentum going into October. It's called uh, also known as October because cyclically uh, September usually a down month, October usually an up month, and that's good for us. And so as I was just saying, here is a chart showing, as I was just speculating, is this a higher low? Is it a head and shoulders? Not really. It's kind of a, I mean, on a closing basis, no. And uh, it's not a higher low. Uh, so, um, you know, we need to put in a higher low to start going higher. Otherwise, we have lower highs, lower highs, still in a downtrending parallel channel, blah, blah, blah. But I think all of that changes soon is the bottom line. Where does Wayne Gretzky go? He goes where the puck is going to be. And I think we need to be ready to be where Bitcoin's going to be in a week or two weeks, which is higher, I believe. All right. Bitcoin's uh, Puel multiple metric is hit a green zone. Um, that's fine. I don't need to pull that up. Although this is interesting. It's the first time since the end of 2022 bear. Um, our other signals um, um, give us all the information that we need, I believe. Um, 
So let's see, we talked about that already. Uh, on chain and analytics. You know, I don't pay a lot of attention to Glassnode and CryptoQuant and all this, but I'll read about it. Um, signal, let's see, rebound. They're usually late, but supporting information helps. And as always, new information equals new decision. And right now we're trying to formulate, uh, are we macro bullish or bearish? So uh, they're saying that's a good push, a good signal. That's fine. I like to watch the sort of more near turn. History suggesting breakout time by wrecked capital. Those guys are pretty good. Been around a long time. Yeah. So he's saying breakout could happen with the next handful of days. And let's see what they're saying. Pretty good charting on those guys. Let's see. So reaccumulation timing wise is important to not again stay with me for i'll pull up that liquidation or sorry the liquidity cycle because it's amazing and uncanny how how the the days between them is uh is is, is very uh accurate and uh consistent all right um and so we had the halving back in april so you know we uh, got ahead of things generally the eight all-time high isn't happening till around now and maybe that was just Front running for the ETFs. Sorry, I had a hiccup there. Uh, you know, as I got older, I, I stopped having hiccups and I just have one big one and then it's over. So that's the good news. All right, hey guys, uh, history suggests breakout time. Um, this is a bit confusing. The red box showing consolidation of 23 bars from breaking out of a downtrend looks like. And so this uh, suggesting 23 bars, it would be kind of time, although it wasn't coming out of a downtrend. Let's see, uh, 2016 broke out of the range bound accumulation phase, 154 days after the halving is what they're saying. And where, uh, let's see, my chart's better. Uh, this is too confusing. Let's get to that. And the cyclical chart here of Bitcoin, September, mostly a down month, kind of mixed, not terribly bad, negative 3%. But October, October next month, shaping up, look at this, on average up 23%. All right. And then November, on average, up 40, uh, 46, 47%. So the next two months, the next three months, I believe, are going to be massive. And we could see that parabolic move come early and then 2025 we just don't know. We just don't know, you guys. Uh, and so I'm focusing more heavily on the uh, stronger altcoins like Solana and Link and, and ETH is starting to look good again. And Bitcoin, which will likely get the bulk, if not assuredly get the bulk of the money coming in the next few months. And then December, start seeing profit taking, going more into the alts into January. And then who knows? Who knows, you guys? So pay attention. Be ready. I think October is shaping up to be a, a good month. But then again, everyone's kind of saying that. So um, we we need to see uh, how it plays out. But I do uh, believe we'll see some upside pressure. Does it, does it stop out early? Certainly could happen. Anything could happen. We have to remember that. Uh, either way, though, I think in the next few weeks, start to push higher in the near term. Okay, so that's enough about that. Uh, let's see. Anything else here over to Coindesk? Uh, let's see. Bitcoin more linked to the US Fed traders. ETH recording biggest outflows since July. Yeah, the ETF really didn't do well. That's the problem with ETH is that um, these institutional funds flows are going on the way out. And um, so, I mean, here's my here's the deal. I, I have buy limit orders on ETH at 2000. I'd buy ETH at 2000 all day long. Do we get there? I don't know, but um, it's it's not getting, the ETH dominance has been on the, the decline. So we'll see what happens. And let's see uh, here, MicroStrategy outpaces BlackRock's IBIT by over three times. I saw a similar study on MicroStrategy outpacing uh, Bitcoin's returns by 300%. So that's the same, same. Uh, and there's a variety of reasons for that we won't go into. But anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, we're 30 minutes in. Perfect. So that's all the news we're going to do today. Uh, we could hop over to Crypto Panic, but um, let's not do that. All right, uh, let's jump out of here and we'll come over to uh, this chart. Now, what was this? This was the, I pulled up, I clicked on something, Bitcoin addresses. Uh, what is this? I can't remember what that was. Okay, never mind. So um, by the way, uh, as we go through these, if you like the indicators, you can hop over to cryptomastery.org slash pro. We're going to be talking about our signals here that have allowed us to call every market cycle top and bottom then in the last two years because we've been just started developing in the last two years. But over time, back testing one of these indicators, our accidental discovery, the early reversal indicator um, has called every market bottom that's only triggered four times in the history 
of Bitcoin on a monthly time frame, and it's always been at the market cycle bottom. And so we'll show you that here in a moment. And then we use these other ones as signs of confluence. All right, with that, um, and you can jump over to moonstream.io and also find it right here. Okay, cool. Uh, let's dive in. I want to look at the iBit here. We have been starting with that. And, you know, interestingly, we have been following the gaps on the iBit. And everyone is filled except for this one down here. We Another 15% drop would fill that gap on the four-hour chart. And, um, you know, I, I that would coincide to around 52K Bitcoin. If we do get another drop to that extent, I would be buying it again. And hopefully it would be a, just a quick wick and put in a higher low in this 32 range. And then we kind of go back up higher. But there's no guarantees, just like the CME gap. They don't all fill. Um, most of the time they do, but not all the time. So let's see. I tell you what, let's do this. I want to load up that chart because I was just talking about the liquidity cycles. So let me find that here. Where is this thing? And liquidity monthly. Okay. And that way we can look at the monthly chart at the same time. And then we'll dive into some of the, um, the details. Okay. So this is this chart study I've been working on and uh, tweaking a bit. There's a lot going on here. But essentially, uh, what we're looking at here in the what to pay attention to in these green boxes, these green highlights, this is where typically the liquidity cycle bottoms and they start to print and add more liquidity. What tends to happen right around there, if we look at that coincidentally, coincidentally, that's when the markets have broken uh, to new, broken above all time high, whether it was retesting it, broken out above all time high, right after that liquidity bottoming, we get all time high in Bitcoin rallies. We also saw it down here at the bottom of this liquidity cycle. What happened shortly thereafter, price broke above the all time high and rallied up to new all time highs. What happened here? Same thing, the, the low liquidity cycle, boom. So where we are right now, liquidity bottoms out, all time high break, Bitcoin rallies. We are right at that pivot point. And I think next month we see that. Uh, can, similarly, the liquidity tops happen here and here and every sort of 1400 days, um, almost with clockwork. And then it's, it's all over. That's every 46 months or 1400 days pretty consistent, 1402, 1400, 1400. So give or take a little bit, but um, the um, with the other, there's a lot going on here, I understand. So also these uh, purple boxes, also pretty, uh, pretty similar in terms of the actual breakout. So this was 49 bars, 49 months till we had the next breakout. This was 43 months or 1300 days till the next all time high breakout here. Now in that cycle, we retested, we pushed up to new all time high in June of 19 and rejected. So similar to this last cycle tier, right? We pushed up in um, you know November, 2020, this is different, but um, that was the last uh, peak cycle high. But here we've been just hugging right along that, but we're really right there, ready to break up above and push up to, uh, these numbers are not accurate, it's more of on the timing side of things. And lastly, many of you have seen this, but the color coding on this is the different uh, different banks. So if we wanna look at People's Bank of China, I don't think this has been updated yet, although PBOC is red, still showing a flat line. Let me pull that back up, but we can see the different uh, central banks, You know, when they start adding liquidity, also markets go higher. Okay, so down below, we have all the other countries. The uh, Bank of England down here in purple, sort of flatlining. Again, uh, this data probably updates end of month. So we'd probably see a peak or a spike here in the next week. And so this is, um, let's see, we've got, uh, it's, it's inverse. So Bank of England, then we have People's uh, Bank of China right here, flatlining. Bank of Japan did start, remember they dropped interest rates earlier, so we can see that spiking. And then of course the US, um, no, sorry, the uh, European Central Bank pushing up and then the US, it's kind of hard to see with this little wedge overlooking the color. But if we move that, it's starting to spike because we had an interest rate drop also. So, so China's actually kind of been last. And uh, so this uh, flat line here on People's Bank of China, I think we'll, we'll start to perk up like there. So we're seeing, we're right there, you guys. This is the, a little bit more advanced study on what we were talking about before. So we're right there, right in the right place at the right time. All right, any questions? I don't see any. 
So um, the other thing I was going to do, and um, then we'll get to some of the indications, but I think this is useful. We do take a deeper dive on all this, by the way, in our M3 Active Trader class, which is what tomorrow, Wednesdays at noon, where we give coin picks, you get daily access to me and a live chat 24 seven. And um, I'm online often posting daily, I get access to the indicators or basic indicators, which we'll show in a minute. And uh, very active chat here, especially today, you guys are very chatty today. And lots of great uh, smart traders uh, in there in the active trader chat. So just to skim through that a lot of people discussing markets, macro environments. And you can see that you get that's just 24 seven. And I'm also posting trade alerts and charts and videos all the time. So if you like what you're seeing today and you want a deeper dive as well as coin picks, then you're going to want to hop over to uh, moonstream.io slash M3. Go ahead, check that out. Um, we, um, we're we starting to add new members again. It's previously been closed. Lots of bonuses, cheat sheets, uh, high probability trade templates, interactive PDFs, like a dollar cost averaging worksheet, portfolio tracker, high probability candlestick patterns, high probability trading patterns. But most of all, you get access to me, 25 year trader and uh, have a pretty good spidey sense on all this. And uh, we've been uh, lots of feedback here on the site. So go check that out. Uh, go check that out. Lots of different bonuses that you get. Lots of value. And you get a cool hat like this one. Uh, actually, we're out of hats. Kind of have to, we have to order some more. But we have. We were going to do that. Okay, guys. Um, back to what I was saying. We're going to do this. I need to load that other chart. I think it's worth looking at uh, the study for um, actually, uh, okay, we'll look at the monthly candle in a minute. The path to 150 Bitcoin and 250 Bitcoin. Let's kind of take a deep breath and slow down a bit. All right, so down below I have the chart and why I think this happens. So, um, you know, the negative factors for the cycle, we had first ever macro global recession, QE printing may not happen, bank term funding program ran out of money and that uh, did not cause a sell off, escalation of international wars. These are all things sort of in the wings. And uh, so these are some factors that we've been talking about for a year now that are starting to happen. We'll look at it more deeper detail tomorrow in M3, but we're starting to see these things start to happen, uh, including political support in favor of Bitcoin and the global debt fiat bubble and a commercial real estate crash. Guys, uh, you know, what are we seeing in China? They are trying to prevent the commercial real estate crash by anyone? Bueller by pumping liquidity into the markets. So I think we could safely, uh, here we know what I'm gonna, these are starting to all turn green-ish. So, I mean, this is not definitive yet, but kinda. So, and then we're also starting to see QE money printing. Are we, are we seeing that yet? Not quite, but that's, that's coming. All right, and the other big question mark, less available exchange supply demand surge. Kind of haven't seen the effects of this, but uh, we'll talk about that more tomorrow in M3. All right, so we've talked about all these things. Let's go over to uh, Bitcoin. Uh, we're not going to talk about Shibu Inu, um, but in terms of what we're seeing, okay, on a weekly time frame, and looking at our indicators. So we have our early reversal indicator which has been uh, most effective calling weekly tops like back here, especially when it aligns with our trend strength indicator. So our bear market, uh, oh shit handle for lack of a better term. You know, the back seat of the car where they have those little handles, they call them oh shit handles because if you take a turn too fast, uh, that's what you're saying when you're grabbing onto it. Uh, I didn't make it up, you guys, but this is essentially our red alert when we see this and this pattern and this and that. And if we get all five, we're out. No emotion. We're out of the markets because that's the top. Uh, we've we've seen it in, in the past on numerous occasions. And similarly, I mentioned on the monthly time frame that uh, these have been excellent in calling the market cycle bottoms. I'll show that to you in case you haven't seen this yet. So when we started to show this green arrow in January of 2023, you guys remember I was saying it's time to get in the markets. I was actually, we launched M3 Active Trader in December of 2022 at the depths of the bear market. And people thought I was crazy and saying to buy, but I was right. And some of you know my little secret here, the midpoint of these vector candles mm -hmm, usually goes in retests and there you go. So I was watching that on the monthly candle, but also once we had this bullish engulfing candle and the early reversal candle on the monthly, that was when I was saying time to get in and we were right. Look at that. Was that a good call? 
you know, uh, 200, 300, almost 300% higher in Bitcoin, 273%. So, um, yeah, and what I was showing you here is the only other times this has ever fired. Those of you that are watching this and don't have these indicators, you need to have these if you're going to compete with people like us and our team that uh, and our members that are using them. These are advanced technical indicators created by a quant engineer and professional trader and an all-around mad scientist um, and a great guy, Joe. And uh, this was an accidental discovery, by the way. So if I went and looked at a larger data set, uh, we'd, we would have seen another arrow down here. But really, before 2015, you can't rely on anything. But look at that. Early reversal indicator right at the bottom of the market. The next time we had it right here, right at the depths of the market. Not exactly the bottom, but just you know, right after that COVID crash. Uh, was that the COVID crash? No, this was the COVID crash. But here I've got in and then here again. So on the monthly time frame and the daily time frame, excellent for uh, bullish calls and of course there are more nuances to that but uh what i did want to do um i'm going to pull up another chart just to see you know what why don't we look at that tomorrow in m3 where we'll look at our monthly study because i have it queued up there where we do look at some of those other signals and the uh, uh the top signals but what i am seeing here which um which i don't love by the way is this monthly big red chevron we have bearish divergence but that was uh back in april so the bearish divergence predicted this downturn back in April. See this? This is our version called the RSI Pro. These red circles, we had bearish divergence back in April and most recently, well, April of 2021. So that was foretelling. Certainly was very early. And then we had bullish divergence in Jan of 2023, right? That's another factor why we were getting into the market then. But here's why I'm still bullish, you guys. Um, markets don't top when the, the RSI Pro really needs to get up into these 90 plus levels and at least get up to 90. So until and unless we're up to at least up there, I think, uh, and maybe you would just be extra conservative, but uh, I want to set an alert on this. And, uh, and, and basically, I want to know when we get up above 85 and just say top, but we're not there yet. We are not there yet. So this is not over by any means. Okay, you guys, um, with that out of the way, let's do this and get down to a shorter time frame. Let me get to a daily chart. This is the one I want to look at. Uh, and if you guys want to look at any coins, we can. Uh, we typically unpack the markets here. The bullish, you know, the most bullish thing here is we've broken above this upward trend channel, even if we were to draw it a little bit wider, I guess <laughs> that's the problem is you never really know how to draw these things. And, but, uh, but you know, if we draw it this way, uh, it's, it's again, I think we roll over here. The buyers are exhausted. We roll over and like the other chart that we saw, I already drew one like this. We come back and um, sorry, trading views really blown it with not letting the indicators sometimes if they overlap. So down like that and then retest. Okay. So that's what I think happens. A little bit of a pullback, uh, good. And then we kind of set this, you know, we we start setting this kind of last angle on the bull run potentially for that bull flag breakout. <laughs> bull flag breakout. And looking at that on a weekly time frame, it's easier to see. I do have the total market cap bull flag breakout drawn giving us a pretty nice upward target on this. So depending on where we draw the bull flag, you know, um, on this uh, weekly time frame, it's, uh, you know, on a conservative basis here. Come on now. If that's the flagpole and we clone that, you know, I think probably we'll draw it on the lower area. But uh, conservative basis, if we go in here, puts us about 100K, right? If that is the flagpole, this is the uh, flag. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, we do look at this every week just about. So um, we're waiting for that until uh, bull flag breakout puts us right up to around 100K, 100K. If you want us to consider it a, a much higher bull flag, I don't know that, um, you know, I mean, just we'll know in hindsight, but that that's, seems a bit, well, that puts us up to 150K, which was my other tar target. There's another hiccup there. Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, pardon me. Um, so basically, we just need to break out of this and get above 72K. I think, you know, that would be the ideal level. Firmly break above 74, 500, 75K. 
I want to see us close above that. So there's no question we've broken new highs and we're in price discovery mode. All right. So uh, that's uh, what we're looking for on uh, on many coins. I've got a couple of these waiting to break into price discovery zone. That's when the real fun happens. Where there's no overhead supply, no overhead sell pressure. And uh, we can really start having fun in the markets here. So here's this other chart where I've got Bitcoin with price discovery mapped up there. Same kind of thing we were just looking at. Target to 100,000, 80 to 100,000 <clears> based on the bull flag breakout. Okay. All right. Where are we right now? Weekly time frame. Bullish on the trend strength indicator, but I'm seeing lower lower highs on this. I think we've we've seen our momentum for the push higher that we just saw. You know, keep in mind we just had a massive rally after this bull, uh, a bullish ERI, and that pushed up around 20% at the top, 19%. You know, so. Uh, if we were to see a pullback here in this range, this is our buy zone back to around 60K. I would like to see 60K hold, but, um, you know, it's not about what we want. All we can do is follow the signals. And uh, <clears throat> right now, they're a little bit inconclusive. Um, let's take a look over at Solana. I want to see the short-term time frame kind of sandwiched between two buy blocks. Uh, here are our buy blocks I was telling you guys about. Many of you are familiar. Solana, I really like, but it's consolidating between sell pressure up here. Um, I, I think the bulls are stronger because they have multiple levels of buy blocks, you know, but, uh, you know, it's going to take a while for that to churn out, for that consolidation to sort out here on Solana. Uh, I do like uh, Solana quite a bit. I do like that it's broken above this downtrending trend channel or trend line and retesting it. This is one of the most ideal chart setups that we like to see, by the way, where we come out, we break above a parallel trend channel top or trend, uh, you know, trend resistance, right? So broke above it, come back and retest it. If it pumps all the way up, more likely it'll be a fake out and fail. I like this buy zone right there because we're coming back to retest. We've got the 50 day, the 21 day and a buy block just below us. A little bit of a bearish engulfing uh, or a bearish engulfing candle and the bearish early reversal indicator. So short term pullback. But uh, I think that would again back in here. Next bounce. Excellent buy. Starting to put in higher lows on Sol. So Sol is one to watch, I think. Uh, somebody's saying, Paul, how does uh, Link look? Yeah, Chainlink. I just took some profits on Link. And by the way, you guys definitely uh, make sure you're doing that. And um, because not, we're not in the parabolic bull yet. Trading these channels is uh, is the name of the game. I'm going to move this. I had a buy on a breakout back here, which didn't happen. So the thing with Chainlink is what's going to happen next. It's still in a downward trending channel, which is why I sold back in here. Uh, take some profits. Uh, I'm, you know, don't look a gift course in the mouth. Bearish ERI was my other reason for selling. Now, um, there are bullish connotations here, though, and so I could be wrong. I like that we have a double bottom, and I like that potentially we're putting in higher lows. So this area here is the area to watch, but I'd rather buy into strength than, than risk this rolling over again and losing profits. I do like Chainlink a lot, and I have an alert set for a breakout buy. I'm going to lower that to around $12 looks good to me. Okay, that would be, you know, at least to have another look at it. <clears throat> We'd want to see a breakout retest and then resuming the uptrend. So uh, looking at the other signals, a little bit overbought, but that's fine. It can stay overbought up here. This is when the old adage, when in doubt, zoom out comes into play. So let's go to a weekly. The weekly is like the battleship. It has a lot of momentum, hard to turn around the, uh, you know, the cruise liner, hard to turn the Titanic as they found out. Uh, speedboat real easy point of this is the momentum on a weekly chart it tells the bigger picture so you know we've pushed up nice and steadily it's just not there yet the 21 and 50 week will act as resistance and this might be higher lows i like the sign but i'm still not i still did take profits there in case we roll back over uh, i am watching this closely now this is a bullish sign tsi Crossing above 20. How many of you guys are new and haven't seen these indicators before? 
uh, and looks like uh, mostly the same people, but um, you know, this is also training on how to use them. So my leading indicator that I'm looking for is the ERI, this here followed by pretty closely followed by a trend strength indicator going green and above 20. This is that barometer. Because when this happens, we usually see this kind of movement, really good follow through. And I don't even need to see price to know my price really moved back here, as we can see without even looking at the chart. And this was a great example. ERI there, uh, the TSI went from red to green and it was above 20. The RS uh, signal line, uh, we'll turn red to green. And uh, when we have three or more in alignment, then it's good to go. So, you know, I think this is a pause. Again, our, our market cycle uh, class, market cycle secrets, our uh, market cycle expert Juan, Juan Villaverde, those of you in that class know he's calling for a uh, daily cycle low in early October. And that would also signify we kind of drift down here for say another 10 days or so. And that would make sense because we want to see so the sellers get it out of their system so that, boom, we can see a big push higher. All right. Uh, render. Yeah. Pump pump phone. Uh, sure enough, render is great. I, I put a buy alert out on render recently and um, uh, do like that. So let's work our way down, though. ETH not looking terribly well. Here's the problem with ETH downward trending channel below the 50 week EMA. And did bounce nicely out of the dollar cost averaging zone, however, and we had our early reversal indicator last week. So what we, and also we had our RSI Pro. Guys, I, I know these just look like red and green doodads or gadgets or whatever to you, but the green circles is bullish divergence and it's a strong buy signal when it aligns with the other signals like the early reversal indicator. If I move that line out, we see we had that. And so, uh, sure, Perry, I'll turn the radar on. And then with the TSI, so the TSI is moving its way higher. Um, I haven't pulled up the trader success checklist yet, but I will, and we'll do it for one of these coins and evaluate it. Maybe we'll do that for um, one of these other ones. Uh, and so this is bullish. So on a weekly basis, I think ETH is pretty good, but I think on a daily basis, probably pulls back a little bit. Uh, you know, it's inching above its EMAs, uh, but it's overbought on the TSA. Uh, it's The signals don't always align, and that's a good time just to sit out. When in doubt, stay out. All right. Saw looking considerably better above its 21 and 50 day EMAs, like we said, and, you know, has some sell pressure up above. But you guys have heard me say I have uh, nearly doubled my bags of Solana just swing trading this range in my IRA since May. So back here in May, buying Solana, selling, buying, selling. I, you guys, I, I've had buy limit orders back here on this flash crash. I got filled, sold up in here. So, um, you know, if you know how to trade and these indicators were giving us the signals, bearish ERI, bearish TSI, bearish signal line, bearish uh, RSI Pro, right in here, we... Uh, I went on this. So we were watching Bitcoin. We, we that's when I was selling. I'm pretty sure I'd have to double check. And um, on our other signals back here was that bear market uh, pullback on Bitcoin. So that red arrow. And for those of you that are more advanced traders, I, you know, the actual indicator is an oscillator that is sort of obnoxious to look at. So we, I had them coded as green arrow, red arrow when the conditions are met. What it actually does is I think it triggers and finds and sees a programmatic buying and selling, institutional buying and selling. So, you know, we're always wondering, was that the dip or is it going to go lower? Essentially, the early reversal indicator is the earliest signal I found catching the inflection point and especially when it aligns. Um, because confluence is everything, right? And there's no one signal that you can trust. But back here, bullish engulfing candle, bullish ERI, went red to green on the TSI, uh, green uh, bullish uh, divergence on the RSI Pro. Boom, nice little pump, take profit on the bearish ERI. And then so right in here, the the the, the thing with this is uh, we are at above support. So I'm holding my Solana. I think this is kind of where we keep pushing higher. I have two higher ERIs in a row. So again, this is partially training for these significant indicators. And again, if you haven't seen these before and you would like to learn more, go over to CryptoMastery uh, dot, uh, CryptoMastery.org slash pro. 
and you can learn more about that right here. Uh, you need to have these guys. If you want to make the most amount of money going into this next phase of the bull run, go here. I'll drop the link uh, and you need to have these. There's a lifetime offer that uh, we are supposed to pull down. We've just been too busy. Watch this 30 minute little mini training on these indicators. Uh, we've built them to give us an edge and our students an edge. And we've done that. So if you're not using these, you're at a disadvantage. Sorry to say. Okay, uh, that's Solana. Let's go ahead. Uh, you want to look at Render, I believe. Let's see. Uh, purchase significant amount around $2. That sounds like a pretty good price. Let's see. We'll go down here. I have some Render as well. A uh, nice uh, entry there on Render for $2. Let's see. Let's kind of zoom out, see what we have. So that would have been, when was that? You bought Render a long time ago. And uh, let's see. So you probably bought it right around here where we could see buy block zones. And this little, the light green box is part of our ERI Pro. Uh, that's part of that bundle. It shows money flow. So when we see this uh, lighter green, that is actual buying that happened, filled orders, where these other boxes are where there are buy limit orders. So if price goes down there, it will be bought. Little different, both are good. So that was an excellent entry on render at $2 right ahead of this pump. Uh, you did write it down a bit. And, um, you, you know, look, I'm not going to sit here and say, you could have sold it here. And, you know, no, not necessarily hindsight, of course. But I will say this, that if you had these indicators, the, the directive would have been to sell here because... Uh, bearish early reversal indicator, bearish engulfing candle, TSI went red, signal red, RSI red, strong sell signal. Um, okay, so where are you? Where are we now? Similarly here, red, red, red. So let's look for green. Um, but here's what's bullish. I wouldn't sell render. I think it's it's got a good uh, retest. And um, you know, look if we wanted to go back and do a Fibonacci on that, it's probably a Fibonacci. Um, uh, hang on, I'm going a little click happy here. Let me do that. And uh, we'll do the fib on that. But to do this, we need to go to the high low. So here we go. So if we did this up to there and, you know, so the it looks like it came down. Yeah, so it came down to the 786 retracement, just barely. That's this blue line and it wicked down just below and held the 786. So that's bullish in that it should go higher from here. The other thing I like, let me get rid of that Fib study, is that we are seeing higher lows. That is something many of you guys missed and took me a long time to make sure I was watching. Let me zoom in a bit. So what we want to do in all of these, we want to find that next upward trend channel. The trend is your friend until it isn't. Right. So um, it's again, be like Wayne Gretzky. Where where could the scene be going? Could this be a new trend channel? I don't know. Let's draw it just in case, because if we catch them early enough, we can really ride them uh, nicely off to profits. And so this one here sort of looks like it ended and it's breaking out of the lower the downward sloping trend channel. We're getting bullish ERIs coming in here. We have bullish money flow on the ERI Pro. We do have sell pressure here, which is going to retest this $6.40 range. But I would imagine my read on this is, and then we'll pull up our indicators, but just on, on experience, I mean, this thing's going to retest here. The reason there's sell pressure here, by the way, is uh, all the people that bought it right here, <laughs> and they were wrong. So they're saying, darn it, I, I, I was wrong again. I hate being wrong. If it just comes back to break even, I'm selling, I'm out. That's the mentality. So that's the sell pressure here. It's also the sell pressure here. It's also the sell pressure here. Okay, it's all human psychology. All right, so but what I do think we see here is a, is a pullback to retest, break out of that retest, you know, same kind of thing. And there we go. Does it go that high? I don't know, but but here, pullback. Um, incidentally though, these green boxes tend not to fail. I think a pullback would maybe go to that midpoint. I drew it here because it sometimes and often retests the prior trend line support resistance. And also, but I like this 21 and 50 day also as support, the thin ice and the thick ice together. It means even stronger support when you're out on the ice. Uh, many of you know, know the analogy there. Let's look at a weekly though. Uh, why? Oops. 
The Weekly tells the real story. And this looks pretty bullish to me. Okay, um, you know, prior vector candle refilled all of this, retest the midpoint of that. All oh, that's good. But here's the big one. Here's the clue, you guys. The trend strength indicator right above, breaking above 20. I'm telling you, if nothing else, just trade that. Let's go back. Um, okay, was this a good time to buy uh, render back here? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. We're not even looking at price, you guys. TSI and the ERI, yeah, that went up around 800%. Not too bad. It's a sharp stick in the eye, uh, right? And so uh, here's another one. ERI, TSI, was that a good time to buy render? Well, let's see what happened. You could have had 500% there and gotten out on the pullback and then had another 800 percent so what do we have here it's a little trickier because the the or the eri um triggered weeks ago we are getting the tsi coming a little bit late we had the rsi pro so it's bullish to me i'm holding uh render and, and once we get above this uh, and hold above the 21 day exponential moving average, you know, let's put on the hash or the uh, ribbon EMA ribbons. Love the EMA ribbons. This is a standard indicator when they really get tight like that and price gets above it. That's why my little push up and pull back right in here. We're weeks away from render taking off. That's what I think. Also, our signal line curving up. Love when the signal line gets all the way over soul and goes negative. These are different algorithms, you guys created by a 25-year quant engineer professional trader. It looks simplistic. It's not. This is a simple yet powerful, and I can't overstate how important it is to have these because, um, you know, all the, a lot of the other indicators out there, everyone else is using, you don't have an edge, and they're lagging signals. These are, um, some of these are predictive, like the early reversal indicator. Uh, and so, and... Um, yeah, I mean, they're all lagging. The ERI is still lagging, but it's the fastest one that we pick up on. Some of our other ones are predictive. At any rate, TSI about to go green on the weekly. They're starting to align. And when the stars align, magic happens. All right, let's see. Uh, more comments here. Take a look at Render. $2 held for a while. Hoping for a big push during bull run. You got it. Uh, I think that's coming. Um, you know, uh, that. so let's talk about that. The question is, am I missing other opportunities by holding it right now? So FOMO really uh, is going to, um, you know, is, is your biggest, is one of your biggest enemies. And, um, you know, if that's your only holding, who's this uh, pump phone? If that's your only holding, I think you're doing fine. Are there others that might go up more? Of course. Do I know what they are with any certainty? No. And I mean, this has, you know, 200% uh, to get to old highs. Where was render long? Yeah, we're, we're, we're in uh, we're in a nice long macro uh, trajectory. Let's say now I had drawn render previously, possibly going up 700%. And I don't remember why I think it drew some kind of trend line up here. It doesn't mean anything. It's just purely a wag, a wild ass guess. But just to get old, to back to old time highs in May, is one hundred and fifty three percent. Call it one hundred thirty percent from from here. Uh, are there other coins that have maybe greater um, potential? Sure, but I think Render is showing strong signs, and um, you know. I'm not sure if that's your only holding, maybe, uh, but but you're doing well from two dollars. Let's say it goes to thirteen. You have a five, uh, six, six x on that from two. You know, you've got a plus six x plus, so that's not bad. I would I would hold that or take some. Here's what I would suggest though: um, your initial investment. As soon as you can take that out, okay, you're playing with the house's money, and maybe go buy something else. Not financial advice, but just educationally. Uh, if you let's say you put some. Um, uh, 2000, let's say you bought a thousand of them and you have 2000 in it and the system goes up to six, six, uh, 6,500, maybe take that 2000 out, go buy something else that has, is just starting its turnaround. But I really like this EMA ribbons tightening, uh, renders, I think is about to go. So you could do a lot worse. I like render and I'm holding some and, um, you know, so I also like helium here looking good blur. AVAX, these are some of my holdings here, but um, you should look, you should never know on these things. 
All right, what else? Anybody else want to look at something? And we do want to try to keep it to an hour. And um, uh, the radar, forgot to turn on the radar, you guys. Uh, lots to look at. The radar is one of our other signals. So when, um, when in down, if it's all red on the radar, stay out. And you want to have at least some green in there. But um, uh, all green, all green is go. All red is no go. So the day clean, this this coincides with what I'm seeing. How do you read the different time frames on these? Well, red on the daily means pullback, which I already told you would happen. Green on the weekly means it'll likely bounce then, and uh, the monthly will usually catch up. Right, monthly still bearish, quarterly still bearish. So that's how I'm reading that uh, over on Rendar. Let's see, uh, so is the checklist in order of weight importance, Perry? Um, that's a good question. Let me pull it up. Meaning, are the first checklist items more important than the later? Um, yeah, I'd say yes on the first couple and the first bunch. And, uh, you know, I have to make a note to myself because I always say we're going to update uh, the uh, checklist. And uh, we're so busy here that uh, we're just fighting for every minute. Uh, I was up till three in the morning last night working on some stuff. But anyway, uh, the show must go on. Um, so we'll add in the uh, the new indicators. Uh, so some of them are there. And um, yes, I overweight ERI and TSI. Uh, let's see. Paul says, I always have trouble seeing the 20 and 50 EMI, EMAs. Uh, yeah, I mean, Paul, that's a Google question, but uh, we can do that. Let me... Um, I don't want to get too distracted. Let's get to the uh, trader success checklist. So all you need to do is go over to moonstream.io. All the way down to the bottom are free service uh, resources, the trader success checklist. You can click on that and uh, and fill that out and we will send it to you. And I'm going to just bypass that so I'm not uh, also on the uh, list here too many times. And uh, okay, yes, unfortunately my VPN blocks this and that is a uh, drawback of this tech platform we are using fortunately i probably have this thing somewhere saved so let me just uh find that thing here and uh so checklist and see, there it is i found it don't worry and um hopefully this is the latest version it looks like it is there you go all right, so basically, and uh, is this the interactive version? Great. So basically what this means is, um, what we use this for is to uh, uh, to tell us when to get into a trade. So um, basically it's interactive when you make a check on any of these. What happened there? It worked for a second and then it stopped. Uh, it's asking me to sign in. Um, I think we've, let's see, I may have, uh, uh, well, shoot. All right, I, I'm, we're not going to be able to show it on this time because it's, we're, we're chewing too much time. But basically, when you check these off there, now it works, you'll get a trade success score incrementalized. So now we have a one out of 21. The question is, are these weighted in, in importance? And uh, for the, in general, yes. So the, the most important thing is, do we see the ERI, this arrow right here? And uh, I probably need a better image of that. So the big green arrow that we were seeing over on this chart that we were just looking at, which one we were looking at? Was it render? Uh, that's a bit messy. Let's find another chart here, you guys. Uh, it's interesting. Benchmark MicroStrategy could soon generate yield by lending its Bitcoin holdings. I tell you that, Michael Strategy guy, he's uh, pretty, pretty smart. Um, that's our, our shortcut acronym for him. Michael strategy, just easier to say. Uh, all right, so let's take a look at, let's take a look at Chainlink here. So basically back here, we had the ERI coming out of a buy block. Uh, so we've got to add buy blocks to our list. But essentially the ERI shows the earliest indication. We've got one out of 21. That's not enough. Is the TSI green and above 20? That's this green and above 20. And if that's the case, then we do add. So right there, green and above 20. So the next day, uh, the next day, this would have triggered. Can you guys see that? Green is just pretty good. Sometimes I'll use that as my signal, but if I really want to be sure, I'll wait for the confirmation. But generally, when you get that enlarged chevron, it, it means it's going higher. So we'll check that off. And now we have a score of 2 out of 21. Often, I will be getting into a trade, not all in, the name of the game, build positions, Dollar cost average, meaning buy and pullbacks, 
or into strength as more of these check off. Everybody understand? Here is the signal line. It has the signal line turned from red to green. Pretty simple stuff, you guys. Uh, this is the signal line. If you have your labels on, you can see signal line pro. And so we were looking back uh, in this range. Let me just go back here so we can see it. And I'll turn, I'll leave the radar on for now. Actually, it's in the way. We'll put it back on in a minute. And uh, what I'll do here is just so it's more clear as we'll use a bar replay. So we're going to go back into this area. And uh, let's make the trade too. I always like doing this. So let's buy, but we're not quite ready yet. We start to see uh, this happen. And then boom, we see an ERI and a TSI go green. You guys see that? So I'm going to buy some there. I'll get into the trade. Two out of 21 on the trade success checklist. And then we'll go one more day. And then what happens, we're starting to get above 20. So, you know, I'd already bought in the position. We could add to it. Why not? And then I will do one more. And then we see the TS, the, sorry, the signal line go green. These do measure different things. So this is another trigger. We'd buy more of it. And uh, then we'll sort of hit up this thing play and uh, go. So what I'm waiting for now, you see this vertical line here too. That's our trend indicator that just fired, which I haven't talked about yet. I know it's a lot, you guys, but wouldn't it make sense? Wouldn't you feel better having different mathematical algorithms coming to a, the same conclusion of bullish versus one. Uh, one is a very dangerous number, um, either as a single point of failure, right? In business, a single point of failure, or key employee leaves, key piece of technology breaks, boom, your business is done. Uh, it's happened, you know? Um, and so you need to have checks and balances. And uh, I almost told the story of my CFO that robbed me for 180,000. So, you know, um, these so single point of failure, bad, multiple confluence, good. The trend indicator here, one of our earlier ones. So the way to read this is when you see a key, the key signifies a new trend may be forming. The bell usually is the next day. The bell is the buy. And the bag of money is to take profit. It's usually run in seven sequence, seven day sequences. And uh, so here, uh, key and bell would have been a nice little trade. We had another key bell that didn't pan out, but that's why you have your other uh, tools to uh, to do it. Here's a perfect example. Key, bell, bought the bell, sold on the bag of money, and it went down. So um, going back to the timing of this, I know it's getting a little bit hard to watch, but let's just go back in here where we just had a bell fire on this. So we'd buy another one. Uh, hypothetically, this is all, you know, but I, I'm using this bars replay so that we can't fudge. Oh, this is going to maybe sometimes it doesn't work in full screen mode. Uh, and then boom, look at that. We had that big push higher. So we're still in the trade waiting for bearish signals. Now we're right up in here to the sell block. I'll give it one more day and starting to see some sell pressure. So I'll sell part of that position. See, I'll sell one. We've bought four. I've sold one. Let's see if we get any stronger sell signals. Now we have the bearish ERI. So I'm going to sell another one. Okay. And if I see this TSI go red, I'll sell the rest. Boom. So um, this is a great example, you guys. So on the trend strength indicator, when it turned red and below 80 here, that coinciding with the TSI, I'm out. Okay, we're, we're even. So from here, we're at flat even. We bought four, we sold four, and I'm just going to let this thing play out. And even though it pushed back higher, we followed our signals and... Um, you know, we had a great trade, 50% win rate. I thought it would have been higher, but uh, anyway, you see how that plays out. And um, these give us, these give us the signs. Usually if we nail them on a market bottom, I mean, this, this was uh, granted, we sold a little bit late. If I were going to do it over again, I was doing it as a live example, but generally um, my sell signals that I normally use uh, in, and you guys can back me up. We see how I trade. If it gets to a sell block, but also our Bollinger Band Pro, we didn't really get up to the upper Bollinger Band. But, um, you know, I, I think this would have been a good example of take some profits. Uh, it came back down on us. And, um, you know, it's still a good example, I think. Okay. Any questions on that? 
some of the other uh, indicators that you get. So you also get the radar. I probably should have had that on uh, toward the end of that thing, but um, it's uh, it's a mixed uh, signal here. And I'm not sure the play the playback works with the radar, to be honest. I think it only shows what the current is. Um, we talk about the rocket here. Uh, we haven't looked at the rocket, see if anything's showing on that. That's one of the other signals that you get access to. And uh, the rocket is really an amazing signal that... Um, uh, it, it, this this one graphic on the page kind of shows all of what we use, our Bollinger Bands, which are modified for crypto specifically. Hitting an upper Bollinger Band is a cell signal. Uh, we have rockets. The rocket is a specific setup where if it is a real body on the launch pad, which is usually the 21-day exponential moving average or the 50-day, and it has a wick below, this little rocket signal will show. Usually it rockets up in the sky. Those are great trades. And if you catch those and you sell at the upper Bollinger Band or prior resistance, that's a quick 10, 20, 30% win. Um, they typically do retrace and fall back to earth. So you want to sell and take your profits on those. But again, uh, our buy blocks, our ERIs, an all green radar or mostly green radar, TSI green, signal green, bell green, RSI bullish divergence, the more of these that add up, they, it's wind at your back. And so, you know, I mean, yes, granted, maybe it'd be great to have one single indicator, but uh, I don't know that I would trust it. If you've been around trading for any length of time, I probably wouldn't trust a single red line, green line. If you guys have been around for long enough, you probably remember Wise Trade, which was just an, a, a, a line that when it was green, you'd buy it, when it was red, you, and it was just, it didn't work. People love the idea, though. Green buy, red sell, and it just didn't really work. So uh, with your money, um, again, point is getting into trades slowly, getting out of trades. Typically, I'll get out a little bit faster because, as we know, Bitcoin and crypto takes the stairs up, takes the elevator down. Usually that drops uh, faster. Uh, let's see. We'll look at bull market support band tomorrow. I did look at some Michimoku in the... In the uh, m3 active trader chat so so you guys um you know i we're right at the coming up on top of the hour i'm going to update the, the trade success checklist because i realize we've left some things out uh because we keep adding to it and but things like bear bullish engulfing candles can also add to the score and the trend score showing a bell like i said and is the candle at support right here like a 50-day ema these are all clues it's taken me 25 years to find and decipher. Some of them are fairly easy. And once you see them, you can't unsee them. Some of them are a little more tricky, like the rocket and some of these other price patterns. But as you can see, when you start getting a trade success score over four and five and six, you want to be adding to those trades and be looking to take profit. But buying into momentum, all of these are clues breaking above resistance a rising trend line support, whether a trend line or exponential moving averages. So here we're at an eight out of 21. We haven't talked about the vol index in a while. This is another good confirm confirming signal, but we don't really need it. We have enough now with the other ones and it's better on shorter time frames for day traders, swing traders. Here's that rocket. The rocket is defined as a green candle. Looking at this right here with the real body resting at support like the 21 day EMA, a wick below is this wick, like a fuse where you light the bottle rocket and it closes at or near the top of the day. That's critical. It has to close with very little overhead um, wick because what does that say? If it closes, meaning 8 p.m. Eastern or midnight UTC time, but 8 p.m. Eastern is the closing candle at, at or near the top. It has to really be close to the top with no more than 5% pullback. And it's just a pattern I've recognized over the years. Once you see it, they can't unsee it. We've coded that. So this rocket signal signifies, just imagine you come out and light the fuse and the longer, the taller that candle, the more rocket fuel it has. And this one had a nice run. It shot way up in the sky and, and then it started seeing topping tells, profit taking, and then it fell back to earth. Uh, so this is one of our favorites. So in this instance, to answer your question, um, this I would give a lot of priority to, Paul. Um, starting out, I look for ERI, TSIs, and start buying, and then the other ones like Signal, Trend, RSI to add to the position. 
if they all align on the same day, I'll go heavy in and I'll look for uh, upper Bollinger Band touches for selling and sell order blocks. That is our other indicator. I guess we didn't really talk about that too much, but here we can see where the sell orders are. See that, you guys, those red boxes, We the, the exchange... Those are limit sell orders, take profit sell orders. So, you know, rent, uh, Chainlink's going to have a little bit of, um, you know, it's got to clear through these. I do think Chainlink kind of slowly grinds higher because look at this, you guys, the 21 and 50, trying to get above that 50 day EMA bullish, but doesn't mean it has to, it can fake out. So we want to see that kind of solidify. And here's the secret, by the way, do you see how the slope on this is kind of sideways? And and if, and if we went back in time, it would have looked like it was curving up, curving up. But, you know, we want to give that a few more days consolidating to make sure that that trajectory is still coming up higher. That's uh, where people can get faked out. Um, okay, so what else? But that's where the buy sell orders are. That's our order block detector, really useful. And um, so, you know, that's what we use to uh, take profits. The only other thing we haven't talked about is this average true range. So um, I know you might be saying, oh, God, I don't need another one. Well, I like it a lot on shorter time frames. It does change the color of the candles. But when we start to see exit zone go into entry, I, you know, if you're building a larger position, I want to be an entry zone. And whereas there can be some chop back and forth, the bigger moves always start with, hang on, let me clean this up a little bit. Cover your eyes because it's a lot going on here. And that's why we, you know, we can set alerts on these indicators and you can turn them on and off. But look at this. So we had some, this is chain link, chop and chop, chop sideways, up, down, up, down. But here we had, we were in entry mode. We had a buy block. And that's when we also started seeing, I imagine some of our other signals go green. Uh, they started to go green back in here and here, and then we went to entry. So I'll use entry zone on the uh, ATR, which can also be used as a dynamic trailing stop loss. So if we were going long here and then it went to exit, we'd use that as a stop loss. People ask, what should I use as a stop loss? It depends. Uh, and then that's subjective, but some people use it for that. And um, on a shorter time frame, those of you that like swing trading, day trading, you know, um, this is Solana on a four hour chart, lower highs, small buy blocks below, but we've got a lot of sell pressure up here around 150. What does the ATR say? We're in a buy entry zone, so I'm, I'm holding. And uh, whereas over here on a four hour, if we flip to exit, I'd be getting out because it tends to follow through. Four hours good for a little advance notice. Exit flipped. Uh, you know, use it as a stop loss. Fine. Probably I would use the 50 period EMA as a stop loss. And then, but look at that dump. Went back to entry mode. It can zigzag. So you want to use it as a confirmation on uh, with your other signals. But, or don't use it at all. If you're new, start slow. Uh, master one or two of these and start getting familiar with the other ones as you go along. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, although they worked at it every day like they were, they were, it was something like that. Uh, green buy blocks. Also, these um, money flow, very important, showing big money coming in. I have noticed that on weekly time frame, uh, when we see these green money flow blocks, the midpoint has not been breached. I have not seen a single chart where the midpoint of those has been breached. And um, maybe have to go, if I go back farther to a bull market, but um, on the way up, these act as tremendous um, buy support zones. Why? When big money comes in and institutions come in, they want to support that price level and they respect that price level. So that's another clue. And uh, the way we use that Bollinger Bands, we've talked about uh, our modified Bollinger Band Pro. Uh, the Bollinger Bands, um, most of you've heard of these, the settings out of the box are not usable in crypto. We've modified ours so they work perfectly for crypto and with different settings. And uh, so use those as your buy, sell, uh, take profit, and uh, also when to get in. So we've coded this on our Bollinger Band Pro. When you see a vertical green line, it means it's touched the bottom of the Bollinger Band. Again, our modified version. And usually that will precede a push higher. 
And similarly, when we get a close above the upper Bollinger Band, these red lines usually is a take profit uh, zone. It usually pulls back. Now, in a raging pump, it doesn't. It's going to push higher, higher, higher. And that's when we would use these sell block zones. Yeah, there's no easy button, you guys. I wish there was, but, um, you know, um, these are the best tools we can have. And you've learned you've learned more complicated things in life that don't really directly tie into your uh, your finances. We've got other patterns here, the three inside up, the radar, all green on the radar. radar. Maybe I should flip these so it's more important. The three inside up is a great pattern that most people don't follow. Uh, the dynamic ATR right here, as I just talked about, is it an entry zone check? You know, if you ever get into a trade and you've got like 10 or more, uh, you want to be in that trade and uh, and and maybe not chasing it. But these are these signals. Is is price? Here's a big one: is price breaking out of a downtrending trading channel and forming a new uptrend? We talk about that a lot. We don't always check it off on the the checklist, but over time, this checklist will be your crutch, and you'll do it all in your head. When you're new, I know it's a lot. Just do just start with the ones at the top of the page. And over time, you'll start building those neural pathways and, and building on this. On the bearish side, similarly, uh, you, if you click on these, it'll take away from the score. So that will reduce it. You can use it for shorts if you want, although we don't teach those. Uh, we've got upper Bollinger Band touches typically sells off. Uh, the three inside down pattern here. Basically, um, I don't know. I feel like uh, I've given you guys enough to you could read about that in the checklist Advanced setups, there's a couple of these where there are multiple signals on the same candle, you know, um, bullish engulfing on a rising EMA. So, you know, we're continuing to evolve this mostly on the bullish side is how we use it. And I think we're kind of we're running out of time. We're coming up at 90 minutes, you guys. Uh, I think it's been a good class and uh, continue coming. Uh, you know, repetition is the mother of all learning. So uh, you guys should be getting this. Are you getting it? I know some of you are still chart challenged. Won't call any names out, but uh, is it making more sense now? Uh, let's see. Uh, Perry says, could put a multiplier in it for the first items. Yeah, I, I mean, I think a multiplier would be too much. And I would do it in order, in that order to start getting into a trade and then adding to it. It's not so much a multiplier effect. But um, the more important, impactful ones are toward the top. I think that's more, uh, that's better. Uh, a bunch of messages I want to catch up on. Let's see, uh, Paul saying, I have trouble seeing the 20 and 50 day on my trading view. Um, well, you don't just see them. You, we, we can do that. Let's start with a fresh chart here. I'll hide the um, uh, Bollinger Bands. I mean, these are probably Google questions or perplexity AI is pretty good. Uh, let's see. So, so all right, I'll, I'll delete these off. My EMAs, I don't want to do that, though, because then they push down to the bottom of my list. But uh, anyway, I will keep this one. And I'll turn it off. So all you do on the EMAs, you go up under here and your indicators, metrics, strategies, type in EMA, moving average exponential. Click on that. It's going to default to a different setting and maybe ugly yellow. Click on that uh, and then uh, right click, go to settings. I'm surprised it went yellow. I had already overridden my default settings, so I thought. But um, because, so go into inputs. So for your 21, which is, is pro yours will probably default to nine and it'll probably be blue. So change it to 21. And I like uh, orange ish on my 21. And you can change the thickness like that. See that? And similarly, uh, you could add it again and do 50 and change it to green for that. And so I'm going to save this as my default. So I can, don't have to do that again on the future. And then my... Um, uh, it's, oh, it looks like I added the 21 twice. Okay, so basically we've got the 21 on there. Let's change this to our 50, like I said. So go under there and 50, and I'll go style as green. And there you go. Now you have it. Cool? Cool. Easy, easy. 
Let's see what makes the numbers appear on the trend pro Perry. I think it's based on a uh, Tom DeMarc and numbers sequence. And uh, it's a good question. Um, I, you know, Joe and I have bantered about it before, but it's part of his algorithm. Tom DeMarc has done some interesting work on numbered sequences. I'm not sure exactly that's it, but um, the, uh, the bell is the buy the numbers one, two, three, four, the five is, is designed as a partial take profit because sometimes it will roll over. So the correct way to use the trend indicator, take some profits on this, take the rest at the bag of money. I always recommend having a moon bag, but in practice, I'm usually going flat. If I'm hitting a uh, sell block order, an upper Bollinger band or this or all of the above. And, um, but ideally you're selling partial positions, buying back lower. So here, great example, uh, the key said, hey, there might be a trend reversal coming. And then we didn't get it. The midline was red, 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 red. Ideally you want green, but in this case, the bell overrides. And here's another shortcut. I know guys, I wish we could make it easier, but each one of these is three indicators in one already. So the vertical green line, if you'll notice, <coughs> pardon me, uh, also shows up on the other indicators here. Now, the reason for that is so you don't need to load the trend indicator. You know that this vertical line is a bell. It's another buy signal. Why is that important? Trading view allows on the lower subscriptions only so many uh, studies. So that's why each one of ours is kind of three in one. And this way, if you're on a lower tier, you don't need to, to have the trend indicator loaded. We know that a vertical line here is, is a, a bell and we don't have to see it. See, bell, 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 right? But here again, um, this was an ideal uh, scenario. Uh, where did we see that? Yeah, so here, key, bell, buy, boom, 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 take profits and then wait for a new trend. Red isn't short, it means there's no trend. Came down, came down, new key in a bell, bought it back lower. Boom, 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 made some profit. We're in a new bell sequence on Chainlink. Now, how did that happen? Chainlink is uh, pushing up. Chainlink's looking good here. It's got a bit of a rally going on. And look there. How about them apples? So, um, you know, so but it's got some sell pressure here on the, floor, the order block here. I think it does drift higher. On a daily time frame, though, what do we have? Uh, I I knew I you know I did take a bunch of profit on this, and part of my spidey sense is like, man, maybe I shouldn't sell all of it, but I did. But I don't mind buying back if my signals align. So here's the thing: bearish ERI price doesn't seem to want to. Uh, this is a very bullish candle, but I I'm going to wait till the end of the day. the The bell is bullish. We're kind of overbought on the TSI though, trend strength indicator. And so what do we want to do here, everyone? When did doubt zoom out? Go to the weekly. So the weekly tells us a little different story. So the weekly says, hey, uh, we're breaking above 20. I love this. Really love that. So bullish on, uh, is link is bullish on the weekly time frame. And the signal line is about to turn higher, also bullish. And the, so the bullish, the weekly is kind of that battleship. It's, it's going to keep going that way for a while. It's hard to turn around. It's slow to turn. See this slow turn, the battleship turned around here. It's going higher. Okay, I'm bullish on link. I was waiting for a pullback on the daily, which we may not have gotten. Double bottom, higher lows, but I have this sell block. You can see I already have my Wayne Gretzky alert. Okay. I don't want to get in prematurely. I have this link above 1250, which is this previous high. I'll buy it back higher to buy into momentum. I do like this pattern. I might buy some more link, but this the sell block has me concerned. So what this what this means is in a daily time frame is <laughs> end of day, we usually see profit taking. This candle could turn red. These sellers are selling into this pump. And I think we could we could still roll back down. It's not con not conclusive enough. 
So that these are the nuances you learn over time. Uh, let's see, numbers appear. So that's the deal on that. Other times, not at all. Okay, so basically answering your question, uh, Perry. Um, yeah, so, so when the numbers disappear, the trend is no longer intact. And I don't know the criteria is are right. The criteria is there might be multiple criteria. Uh, English 101. Um, so so basically we had a key and a bell and price went down. But the number sequence still picked up when it turned. And I don't know the algorithm that Joe uses as long as it continues, you know, but this is kind of a janky one. I will generally not stay in if price is going down and we don't print a number. Sometimes they resume, but I like to see key bell one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, take some profits, wait for a new bell, which, you know, the, the, there are more nuances on this. Use your other indicators as confluence, but generally I like this the best when it's coming out of a low, a relative low in that first move. But on a raging bull market, like with Bitcoin, we'll see, and Chainlink, we'll see this. When we see the bull, we'll see multiple key bell sequences, two, three, four in a row, okay? So, um, yeah, so uh, there are nuances to these things, but um, we're still in swing trading mode uh, and not home run hitting mode. Stock traders would kill for 50% profits in a couple of weeks. I know, right? Uh, you know, we did... 30% profit in our crypto, we'd be on the cover of Forbes as, uh, for stock traders, uh, stock fund. Um, anyway, one to three minute on the radar can flip flop one in a month, three month can flip flop depending on performance of the daily weekly. Uh, well, it's not depending directly depending um, on the daily weekly. It's in aggregate, but, but yeah because they're longer time frames. Now these are based on the radar just just so you sort of asked. Thank you Leslie. Um these the radar are based on stochastic RSIs per Joe and that's what institutions and the algos generally rely on. And now I've watched the radar and uh now the default out of the box is 4 hour daily, weekly, monthly. Um and um and I've watched it on that Suddenly, when all four go green, buying like programmatic buying happens right away. Same thing on the, the red. So, but I just tend to like to have a longer time frame, like a quarterly. Uh, let's see any replay for deeper understanding. Yeah, Dr. T, we have a replay of this we put out uh, and um, post in the M3 uh, Actor Trader class. If you are a member of Crypto Mastery, it goes in a membership area. So if you're watching this, just kind of popping on here and get involved in our ecosystem, guys, I'm just going to, I can't oversell it, but for the amount you'd pay for this, um, if you don't already have these, this will make a big difference in your trading, especially coming to these weekly classes. You can read, we haven't even asked for testimonials in three years because we just got so many, we couldn't fit them on one page. Some of the bonuses, you get the bonus training here on setting up trading view. You get the radar that we've just talked about. Oh, and I almost forgot the, the trade screener as a bonus. <clears throat> Let me see if I have it on here. So basically, the other day, we had it all green. Now, you can change your favorite coins in here under inputs. So if you don't want to watch ETH, Litecoin, Ondo, Sol, AVAX, Nier, and Brett token... Uh, you can change those out. But interestingly, these are all red now. ETH and Litecoin, red, Bitcoin mixed. So you wouldn't be buying any of these here uh, when they're all green. Different story. Wait for it, you guys. It's We're going to come in one day and the markets will be red, green lining. Instead of red lining, be just, everything's green. And, and that's the time when you want to have a trading plan. You want to know what coins you want to own longer term. Because otherwise, you'll be just chasing the big mover on Coinbase every day. And that's a loser's game. This trade screener, uh, there's a time and a place for it. We're keeping it kind of uh, under wraps right now because, you know, markets are sort of mixed. So we'll hide it. But these are professional level tools that, um, again, you don't need all of them. You can click them on and click them off. You'll develop your own battle rhythm and understanding it all. 
Okay, where were we? Link is in the middle of a sell block on the daily. Maybe it will push through. I would say that it does, Perry. Uh, buy back if it pushes the, through the buy block. Yeah, sell block, right. I would buy it higher. I don't mind paying more into strength and momentum. You know, I don't like to, like right up here with Bitcoin's up to 74K, I'm, I'm going to sell, take profits in here for a pullback. I'll probably sell half. Although I hate to sell, you know, uh, you know, I'm a whole coiner on my trading account. You hate to like sell it, but um, if you can buy it back for less and get more of it, uh, that's great. And then always move profits over. Point is, let me go to the total market cap. We cover this in more detail tomorrow and we look at things like Bitcoin dominance, et cetera. But on the total market cap, you know, we've broken this downward trajectory on the weekly. Where this does still look like a bull flag. And the measured move on that on the breakout is 4.8 trillion. So that's wonderful. Uh, we have this uh, sort of trend line support there back above that 2 trillion mark. Very bullish also. So, you know, uh, we're just waiting for that break. And, and when we get it, it's off to the races. However, you know, on this weekly, and we go to a daily, there's a lot of sell pressure. Look at all that sell pressure on the total market cap. That's in aggregate. So lots of sell pressure here at 2.6 trillion because of this peak. Why is that? A lot of people bought this breakout and they were wrong. And they're like, you know, whether this is they or programmatic, it's just, it is what it is. There's heavier sell pressure at this peak and then all the way back, you know, to this peak. And I think cer certainly at the $3 trillion mark, uh, we'll see more sell pressure. So it's kind of like um, this liquidity cycle is the only thing that's going to save us. And, you know, so even though he showed it as straight up, it's going to be kind of like one of these <laughs> kind of a scenarios. Uh, but, um, you know, that that's, we're close to you guys. Uh, at least we're not in a bear market, which is just years of bleeding out. All right, pump phone. It took me a while uh, being stubborn, but I'm finally convinced to purchase the indicators. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's. look, I'm not here to sell you things. We really want to give you guys the tools to succeed. We've painstakingly, fine-tuned and honed these into being the best out there. Um, you know, there's other things out there. You can certainly use them complementary to your other signals. But, um, you know, I've played with Market Cipher. I think it's very tricky and uh, and difficult. Ours is much cleaner and easier to use and uh, as is, is more effective. You know, we have money flow now on the ERI Pro. And so that's been a huge advantage in addition. So, um, you know, order blocks, et cetera. Yeah, so uh, let's see, for a beginner who's been with Moonstream a while with Mike's long-term approach, which is which is better, the Crypto Mastery with seven indicators or the Crypto Mastery Pro with nine? The Crypto Mastery Pro is better uh, because of the additions that we've had. And if you're a beginner and it's intimidating, you can start with the basic ones but really, we recommend the pro. And, uh, you know, if you'd like to start out with the basics, you get those free as part of crypto, uh, the active trader rather. And that would get let you learn the basics. If what I showed today is too much and you're a beginner, um, you know, it's tough because everyone has different mindsets. If you're a moon streamer with longer term outlook, uh, the active trader may or may not be for you other than helping to time your entries. So you can be a long term view and trade the trend channel. That's my view. You might say, I like link or uh, I think you said chain link um, or render. I like render long term. Beautiful. But you can still buy low, sell high in that channel using the indicators. You know, and even though long term sounds great, when the top of the market comes, you don't want to hold through the next bear market. I, uh, you know, you might, you, I think it's a good idea to have some on a cold storage wallet. You put in the safe, you put it in the safety deposit box, fine. But, you know, it doesn't really make sense to me to hold through a, a nasty bear market, which the next one could be pretty, pretty, it could be extended. So we are looking for the market tops.
on that. So let me just read the question though. So, but also on the Mastery Pro, you get a lifetime um, uh, opportunity here, and that is going up. We keep we keep teasing you guys with that, but currently it's fourteen ninety seven. We just really had to have time in the team uh, as, uh, through the end of the summer I was dealing with typhoons and volcanoes and uh, all kinds of things and travel. So. Um, yeah, this is going up. Fourteen ninety seven for lifetime. Go get that. Um, thank me later. Uh, let's see, Perry. Your screener is all green right now, Perry. What What's on your screener? Uh, David said all. Well, all right. What did, What are we missing here? And my, what time frame are you on, you guys? Was I on the wrong time frame or screen? Where did I have that? All right, hold on, hold hold the phone. Let's try this again. M3 screener. Oh, there it is all green. What? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. Is it based on the time frame that we're on? Like, that's what it was. I was on a weekly chart. Gotcha. Okay. Daily, all green. Look at that's interesting. Thanks, guys. Um, Yeah, beautiful. So, so, you know, that's why I'm not selling. Normally I would sell up in this range, wait for a pullback. I just feel like there's my spidey senses. There's sort of an imminent, you know, musical chairs. People are going to just rush into this. It's not worth it for a little pullback. If Bitcoin pulls back to 62K, I'd buy more. But I'm pretty much fully invested right now. And um, but some of this, well, watch if I sell some altcoins. Uh, but this looks pretty good. ETH, Litecoin, Ondo, Sol, AVAX, Near, uh, Brett Token, all green. So that's good. Liquidity cycle numbers on your trading view study were just the totals of the banks or other sources too. Uh, Perry, that that's kind of um, let's go. Let's see, do I still have that open? The um I already saw that. Uh, liquidity cycle numbers on your trading view study were just the totals of the banks. Do you mean these right here? These are the central banks. And um, and the data comes from a from um, in the exchanges and the overall data feeds. So it's uh, in uh, terms of this, the... Yeah, I'd have to uh, dive into this a little bit, but um, uh, and unpack that because it's been a while since we started this, and uh, part of it was based on another study that I modified and added to. But these liquidity sources you can see are the central banks, so the People's Bank of China, P Bank of Japan, the European Central Bank, FedNet, etc. Okay. Um, all right. All green daily daily. Yes. Yeah, so we've unpacked that guys. I've got to wrap up here. These recordings take forever to render if we go too far. And this is usually an hour class. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Um, you know, look, uh, now's the time, uh, you know, if you don't want to do the lifetime on this, on these, you can also go yearly. And so it's still on sale four ninety seven for a year. You can always upgrade later. Uh, price will be higher. We're gonna once the bull really takes off, we will we're gonna bump it up to 1797 and 1997, and then we might not do a lifetime. Uh, I'm not sure why this takes forever to load, but you have that option, and you know you can do it for uh, you know the year, and then you make so much money you buy the lifetime. But uh, in the end, it's a worthwhile it's a worthwhile investment on these. I can't say enough about them. And again, we do these classes every Tuesday. Um, again, tomorrow, if you do like what you see here and want to go deeper dive, I do coin recommendations and we go and do a deeper dive on the M3 Active Trader. So that is uh, uh, Wednesday's class. And of course, we have a Retire Rich class Thursday, which is more macro-based, more um, longer term. So we have a watch list. We typically go in and buy a lot of stuff opportune times like October of 2023, Feb 2024, and we just put out a buy list in Retire Rich. These are longer term holds, future Netflix and Amazons. And um, I thought we had updated the link on that. Um, so Myrene, if you're listening, let's link to the page where you can uh, go watch the preview. Uh, and this this is just the the overall information doc here, and we need to update that uh, link here. But um, 
let me see if I can find it for you. Is, does anybody have interest in that before I share? I mean, look, we're not, we're, we're trying to give something for everybody that um, resonates with you. Some of you are not active traders, don't want to be. And uh, some of you would like more of what we do uh, in the um, Moonstream newsletter. We just, we just released our monthly pick, by the way. And uh, let's see, uh, I'm not... I don't have the link for the retire rich page. It's not coming up. So uh, let's see uh, in the chat, my Irene, if you could drop that link, it's not pulling up for me. I thought we had updated this on the main page, but let's do that. So that goes for on here. There's a highlight reel of a previous class. These classes are very good. This is so M3 active trader swing trading, and we're giving buy recommendations, take profits, sort of catching those swings like I was doing in Solana. Retire rich, we're building a portfolio over time to really nail the bigger moves into the end of the bull run. Trying to, we're, we're identifying future household names, future Netflix and Amazons. Uh, there's one that we recommended a year ago that has come down and is an ideal buy point right now. And it's reinventing NFTs, intelligent NFTs. It's doing some really cool things. It's a gem coin, I think, has huge potential. And uh, there's another one that was the previous Moonstream big winner that I think has 100x potential from here, but uh, it's a bit risky. It's not a, it's not one to trade. So something for everybody. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, you're welcome to go here and book a call with me. If you'd like one-on-one -on -one help, some of you, um, I'm working with one-on-one -on -one and you can uh, book a call here on this page, which is just moonstream.io slash work with me. You can watch a short little video and learn more so anyway but we're not going to release more services <laughs> that's enough and uh anyway so let's see in terms of that chat do we have uh, i don't want to do that where is the, the chat here i can't find it but uh anyway we'll get that updated uh you can just go to moonstream.io and click on that we'll get this link updated here in the next half an hour even if i have to go in and do it so, all right, everyone, have a good day, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow in M3. I do see some nice setups happening, and uh, certainly on Thursday, uh, Retire Rich, we've been uh, getting some really cool, diving into some really cool things, uh, future pacing uh, technologies and so forth. And uh, so, anyway, good time to be back involved. We'll see you guys next week. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.